It was cool seeing how Simon Dunan creates the windows for Barney's, but now I'm heading over to hang out with his other half, designer Jonathan Adler. When you walk into Jonathan Adler's store, it makes you want your home to be fun, have some color, have some life. I'm psyched to meet him and kind of figure out how he's managed to take that philosophy and turn it into an incredibly successful business. So we're in your showroom. You're in correct? my showroom, which is sort of an adjunct to my office. And um, this is where all my stuff is. I want you to check it all out. You've got your start doing pottery, right? Yeah, I'm a potter. But yet you got rugs, you got candles, you got pillows, you got everything in here. I like to think that I make everything you need to furnish a groovy, happy home. A lot of pillows, I see. Um, pillows, pillows, pillows. The truth of the matter is that throw pillows are sort of the easiest and quickest way to add life and flavor and color to your house. And without spending a zillion dollars. Exactly. All right, room number two. My first question, the breast collection. Yes, this is my muse collection. Each one of these is inspired by different surrealist artists. As a potter, I've always been uh, drawn to figural pottery. This is one of my favorite pieces. With a piece like that, which is one of your iconic pieces, mm -hmm. I mean, what was the creative process? Like, what was the germ that then grew into this? Well, it's, there were many germs. <laughs> um, I'm sort of germ riddled. Um, the, the idea was kind of simple, actually. My husband, Simon, is a window dresser, and this is really embarrassing, but there are always mannequin heads sitting around our apartment, and there was one of my vases sitting on the table, and next to it was this mannequin head, and I kept looking up, and just my eye was instantly drawn to the mannequin's face. And I thought to myself, you know, I love this pot that I made, but there's something about a face that is so much more compelling than an abstract thing. And I was like, I gotta make figural stuff. And that really was the germ of the idea. And then the actual face itself was inspired by Morgan Fairchild. What? Yeah, <laughs> and I thought she had just the right look to create sort of an ethereal vibe that was not too identifiable. Jonathan Adler is a household name now in interior design circle, but it was a grind for him to get there. At what point did you say, you know what, I do want to become a potter, I'm going to go for it. And how the hell did you think you'd ever make a career doing well, this? I, I never did. Um, I took a class at a pottery studio just to make some stuff, and I just kept going there every single day for about six months. And my parents were like totally freaked out and said, you know, you're living in New York, you're unemployed. Not, it's a, been, not, not a cheap town. You know, coming up to like a year, what's the plan? And so I called a buyer at Barney's and they came and saw the pots I was making, they placed an order. Were you shocked, or did you think Completely that? Completely and totally shocked. Shocked they came to see my stuff, shocked they placed an order, and I sort of made the order, and six months later, my dad was like, have they paid you? And I was like, no, but I'm sort of embarrassed to ask. And he's like, well, you've got to ask. So I called them up, and I was like, you know, I don't mean to like put pressure on you, but I'd love to, you know, if you could hang me. I was really nervous, and they were like, Oh, you're the guy who didn't include an invoice. And I was like, <laughs> invoice? I was like, I didn't know what I was doing, which was absolutely fantastic because I sort of learned while I did it. Yeah. And it just happened organically, which is how I think things should happen. At what point does this go from being, I'm making some pots, I'm making a little bit of cash, to, wait a minute, I can actually have a business? Probably the most significant thing that I did was I found a workshop to make my stuff for me in Peru. Exactly. And that was a huge step forward, and it gave me an opportunity to get out from behind the wheel and think, I've got to move beyond pots. So what am I trying to say with these pots? And I thought design should be beautiful and chic, but should have an element of levity. It's almost like the whole world opened up because I thought, oh, well, that ethos, that happy, chic ethos can be applied to anything. I was promised that we could get our hands dirty. Yes. Yeah, come, we're here we are in the fancy showroom. Why don't you come on up to my messy pottery studio and I will make a pot. So this is the pottery studio. Welcome. Thank you. New shirt. New shirt. I'm gonna keep it real and show you how I make a pot. The key to potting is to sort of make yourself as much like a machine as possible. Which means what? Meaning like, I need to be in control of the clay and I will not move. You've gotta be firm-handed. Firm-handed and steady. The first thing you do is you make a cylinder and you train yourself to make an ever bigger cylinder. Wow, look at that. 
Don't get stuck. All right, what are you doing in there? You're going, you're getting the bottom? Yeah, my paw on the inside is pushing out. So it's getting and wider. And my paw on the outside is pushing in, and I'm just sort of shaping it. Wow, that's amazing. Once this is done, it goes into the kiln, which is basically a giant oven. Yes. And that bakes it? Yeah, it actually changes the chemical makeup of it so that once it's fired, it can no longer be watered down into clay again. It's oh, like okay. a different So it finishes thing. it. Your pottery, you know, it's not cheap, but it's not crazy expensive by any stretch. It's pretty accessible as far as this stuff goes. I hope so. I try do to you, make it accessible. Do you collect any very expensive antique pieces? Honestly, I find very expensive stuff to be kind of depressing. <laughs> I do. I think it's like when things get really expensive, they become too precious and yeah. they sort of kill the fun factor. So I work really hard to make stuff affordable. Can I get my hands dirty? Can I touch this thing? Yes. yes. And remember, think like a machine. What Be can steady. I do without breaking it or ruining it? Oh, you're going to ruin it. I'm going to ruin it anyway. It's fine. I don't care. Just start like playing with the neck. This is going to affect the shape of it. Negatively, nice it seems. Yes. <laughs> wow. It's definitely affecting the shape That's of it. That's something your assignment Simon Wit coming to. <laughs> it's not going fast enough. The wheel is well, slow. You know what? I'm kind of pretending okay. that you're doing something to the pop, but I'm actually on the other side trying to keep it slow and steady. Wow, good job. You know what? Screw this magazine editor nonsense. I'm going to really, build a potter. Yeah, I think you've got what it takes. I think this is going to be a pitcher. So first I'm going to just um, make the little pitcher situation. I just want to finish up the thingy. So I like a nice big hearty spout so that iced tea will flow. It's amazing to see something done by hand. Yeah. Often hand is sort of the most expedient way to make something. You kind of drag the wire you underneath. Drag the wire underneath. I can grab it with a little paw. Wow. Plop it onto my table. And there's a pitcher. Oh, awesome. Jonathan, thank you so much. I learned a hell of a lot. Good. And, uh, thanks. Right. Do we get to play ping pong? Totally. Let me just move Michael Jackson. <laughs> Any domestic rage you might have should come out at the ping pong table. <laughs> you gotta do what you gotta do.